How to make custom 3D objects in Adobe Dimension. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to discuss how to create custom 3D objects using Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop for use in Adobe Dimension. Now I've seen some people on uh, YouTube make some uh, Photoshop tutorials to then make a uh, um, an Adobe Dimension um, object, but Photoshop's just very inaccurate. And so I, I think I think you're better off if you start with Adobe Illustrator, and then take that shape that's nice and crisp and vector, pull it in to Photoshop, and then make the 3D object uh, inside of that. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, if you know how to make 3D objects in another program, like uh, Cinema 4D or Blender or something like that, you're better off doing it that way. But this is a cool, easy way to make something simple um, that will work for product um, you know, displays, mock-ups, if you just can't find a freebie somewhere uh, or it's not in already in Adobe Dimensions uh, templates. So like a water bottle like this, for instance. So we are going to take this existing water bottle label that I made years ago, and we're going to uh, place it in here. Uh, but first we're gonna make the shape, uh, one edge, kind of one half, if you will, of an edge of the shape of the water bottle. And then we'll go from there. So you wanna start in Illustrator and you want to kind of start on one end or the other. I would say since we're going to have a cap on top of this and we're creating two separate pieces, we're creating the plastic bottle part itself and then we'll use a cap that's already in uh, Adobe uh, Dimension. So to create the bottle, let's start up here with the pen tool, hotkey P. And then I'm going to click and go ahead and give it a black stroke so I can see it. Maybe five point would be good. I'm going to click over here. I'm holding shift as I click and I'm going to zoom in using alt and the middle mouse wheel so that I can see where I'm going. Without the alt, you just go up and down. With alt, you go in and out. And with control, you can go left to right. So those are really important quick ways to move around uh, without losing your pen tool because otherwise you'd have to use your zoom key. All right, now come down, hold shift to create another point. I'm gonna hold shift to come out and you'll notice I'm ignoring some of the three dimensional qualities of the original image. I just wanna make this as flat as possible. Um, we're gonna come out over here and we're gonna come out, let's see, about here somewhere. I'm holding shift and I'm clicking and dragging to create these handles until the preview line matches where I want it to go and then when I release the shape, um, forms to my preview line. I'm gonna go all the way down. I'm ignoring some of this texture for now. We're just gonna come down here, kind of make something like this. And about there, you should be able to see these guidelines. If you don't, you want to go to view smart guides and turn those on. Uh, those are very helpful when you're making stuff like this so you know that you're perfectly aligned with your original point. And I'm gonna go ahead and complete it for now. Um, and do like that, and I'll show you why. Because I'm going to make these uh, little indention areas with, I'm gonna use a line segment tool, so right over here. Grab that and kind of make it where the label part is, and then I'm gonna make some uh, areas for some ripples too, so just click, drag. I'm holding Shift and Alt as I click on this, Shift and Alt to make a copy. See, all you get two cursors, so that means when you release, you will make a copy of what you just clicked on and are dragging. Shift just helps me keep it in line horizontally and vertically. So here we'll just go there. I think I like the placement of those. I'm gonna shift click or click and drag to grab both. I have the background layer locked, by the way. Um, and then I'm gonna drag both of these and again, holding Shift and Alt to create a copy. Once I've done that, I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate. And there you go, that's probably enough. I'm also gonna grab this and come up here 
to this area roughly, and then I'm gonna delete that one so that I have about the same all over. I'm gonna grab all of these, and then I'm gonna go over to my Pathfinder and click on Divide. That will cut them up for me just like so. Uh, what's cool is now I can right click on this and say Isolate Selected Group because it just grouped everything. And that's gonna take me into isolation mode grab only the smaller parts and you can do this by clicking and holding shift as you go and just make sure that that's all we've got yep that's what we've got i would bring these in ever so slightly about here that's probably going to be good enough and now you can see that that kind of creates the ripples i'm going to grab everything again come over to pathfinder and click unite and then i'm going to use my direct selection tool, hotkey A, to select just this edge on the middle and make sure that you get all of the points that are in between here and here. So I like, I want the top anchor and I want the bottom anchor, but I don't want any of these other anchor points. So I'm going to click and drag all of them. You can see they're selected. I'm going to hit delete. So when you're done, and let me just move this picture out of the way so I can show you, it should look let me put some white behind there so you can really see it. It should look like this. And let's just lock that and grab, let's do five points so you can really see it. So it should look like this when you're done, which is just that edge of the water bottle. Now I'm gonna grab all of my points from here. I'm gonna grab those and I'm gonna shift click with my direct selection tool on any of the other points along the way that are part of the bevels. And see, when you do that, you get these little circles that appear um, at every anchor point that's a corner at 90 degree angles. But if you click and, if all of them are selected and you click and drag this, you can effectively you know, round them out to the max degree, which is 0 0.06 inches on my screen. It may say something different on yours, but if you zoom in, you'll see, yep, I just curved everything. And that's going to make it look more uh, like a traditional plastic bottle. What I might do is come up here and select these and actually diminish that a little bit because I think that's a bit strong for that part. And I might do the same thing here, just a little less on those points. Um, but I like that. Overall, that looks really good. Okay, so you've made your object uh, side in Adobe Illustrator. Next step you wanna do is select that, go ahead and hit Control C or Command C to copy that, come into Photoshop, create a new file. Let's go ahead and make it, um, I'll just use inches because it's easy for me, inches are easy. I'm gonna make it five inches by 10 inches and 72 is fine. You wanna make sure that it's in RGB mode, not CMYK, and then hit Create. Now there's my artboard. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control V to paste as a smart object. Um, probably doesn't really matter. I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit. Place it over here on the left side. Good, it's selected. While it's selected, go to 3D, new 3D extrusion from selected uh, layer. Click on that. Uh, you'll get something similar to this. And then you'll want to click on this over here. You should get a properties uh, panel and click on all the way at the bottom. I think it starts up here. So you wanna scroll all the way to the bottom to this one, which is bend X 360 right. Boom, come over here, place that at zero, and it usually takes a second to update. There it is. Um, it didn't actually update, did it? Go back. Yep, it didn't want to. There we go, zero, great. Now, that's your object. Um, which is, that's what it's gonna look like inside of our 3D program. And so far I'm, I'm pleased enough with that. Um, if you wanted to, you could always go back in and sort of alter up how this um, portion appears. I'd rather not mess with it. I might check off catch shadows and uh, cast shadows though. I, I don't think you need those. And um, we'll probably add our own shadows in Adobe Dimension. But something like that is gonna be just fine. While you're in your layers tab over here, 
you want to right click on your 3D object and just say export 3D layer. You want to click the format um, wave front object for Adobe Dimension, just hit OK. Uh, go ahead and just label it bottle. I'll go ahead and do that there. Yep, I'm replacing one I already made. And now let's go into Adobe Dimension. Uh, cr click Create New. You can hit Control I to import or Command I. Uh, here's our bottle object file that we made. Go ahead and hit Open. The weird thing is it will always place it somewhere odd. This is the arrow that tells you actually where it is. For some reason, it won't put it in the middle of your screen. I don't know why. There's no real reason. So just come over to Properties, Position, and zero everything out. And then you should see your bottle. There it is, there it is. I'm gonna zoom in with the middle mouse wheel. I'm going to uh, hold space and right click to pan. I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. And again, space, holding space down while right clicking on my mouse will give me this pan option, pan up and down, left and right. If you just use your right click, it will give you the rotate option. So you rotate on an axis like, like so, uh, hold space and you can pan, okay? So here is our 3D object is over here, vector smart object. Uh, go ahead and click on it and you'll see it's got five um, sort of layers to it. The only one you really want is this one right here. These other layers are usually, if you're making something in Photoshop, it's gonna create these funky, um, unnecessary uh, remnants. And, and you'll see them, especially if you make this into glass or plastic, it'll show up. So what you should do is click here, zero the opacity on any of these dark gray ones. So zero zero and zero and then come to this one um, and what I would do is throw on a plastic uh, texture you should already have Adobe standard materials plastic is second row middle material just click and drag it and boom you've made plastic now if you want if you want it to look like a plastic water bottle you need to drop the opacity to maybe 20 or 25 percent and that's what you're going to get you're going to get this somewhat opaque um, or somewhat transparent looking plastic bottle, which is what we want. Um, and if you want to quickly render that out to see, you can click this button up here and it will do a fast render for you. You can see, yeah, that's that's actually looking okay. We're, we're getting what we want. We get some nice cool reflections uh, from the plastic. It, it's not in completely transparent, but uh, you really can't see a whole lot of color in the bottle itself, so that's that's really good. I'm going to go ahead and click that off. Now, uh, as I've got my vector smart object selected here, double click in again to go to these, I'm going to click on plastic just so I can add a new uh, graphic right in here. Now, this is the graphic I created earlier, so you'll have to save your JPEG file of your label um, in your whatever program you made it in. And then come over here and find it. Let's see, I think mine was yep, label JPEG, boom. Let's go ahead and put that in there. And it what it does is it's going to create a, a weird, it's gonna do this, which is just really strange. Um, oh, also, I, I, I made a mistake, so this is good. On plastic, uh, opacity zero, not what you wanna do. You actually wanna come to translucence and bump up the translucence to probably 90, 85, somewhere in that range, and then change the base color to white. So that's really what you wanna do. That's gonna get you more of that plastic look and not make your uh, graphic uh, a low opacity. So good thing I did that because I did that earlier and that's a mistake. All right, so now we've clicked on our graphic and let's just drag this around. I'm just clicking anywhere and dragging until I can see it fully. So it's about there, and I probably wanna shrink it down just ever so slightly so it fits in that space. Okay, so if we go here, it's gonna create it on both sides. Again, this is not perfect. You know, if you, if you need the back label as well to show like nutritional information, stuff like that, this probably isn't gonna be a good way to do it because I don't know the workaround for that. <laughs> uh, Dimension's just not a perfect um, 3D software. It's just so-so. Um, but, you know, if you can just get a nice looking preview of what you're making, sometimes you can sell, sell it to your clients better. So 
That's really all we're going for here is a, a better than usual mockup. So let's just say right there. And if you want to check again the preview, you can do that. Um, if you need, you can make sure the placement's decal not fill and opacity probably 100%. Roughness, uh, the higher this is, the more matte it's going to appear. The lower it is, the more shiny it's going to appear. So let's just drop it down to make it really shiny. And if you want it to be metallic, you can up that too. Uh, I probably won't do any metallic with this one since that would be unusual for a water bottle to have metallic qualities to it. Um, let's see, there you go. Once you click on this thing, you almost lose everything you were doing. It's just not the best program in the world to get this done, but we are going to just shrink that down a little bit more maybe. Oh, that's frustrating. See, not the best, but it gets the job done in a pinch. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I think over here we get a little bit more light. Let's do that. And let's go ahead and add the cap. Now, I don't think you can really make the cap in Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop because of those kind of grooves that are on the side. Um, if I go back, you know, you know, look here, these grooves right here, I think would be nearly impossible to make unless you're using a 3D software that's meant to do that. So what I would just do in this case is grab this square bottle here. So let's just place that. It's too big, so we're gonna have to bring the scale down to, I don't know, let's see what 0.5 does all across. That's still too big, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Um, and that should be okay. I'm gonna click this up about here. Actually, yeah, yeah, let's just do that. We'll, we'll bring it up and pan up a little bit. What you can do is click on the square bottle folder and it's going to have bottle, safety ring, and lid. You don't want the bottle. So just click on bottle and then delete. But the lid and safety ring we still want. I think they're still a little bit large. We could do um, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, uh, excuse me, 0.3 and 0.3. That might be a good size. I might go 0.35. That looks really good, I think. And again, I'm just grabbing this green arrow to, to, to place it. But something about like that looks pretty good. Now, what I wanna do with this, uh, you could make this a white one, or I, I kinda like to match this blue. So let me just open up Illustrator and get the values in RGB. So 27, 66, 152. And 27, 66, 152. Let's come into the lid and double click this material, or click on this lid material and then the base color. And I've already forgot it. 2766, 152. 2766, 152. Is that what I said? Yes. All right. 26, 2766, 152. Cool. And then I'm going to add that same thing to the safety ring. So it looks like it already did. Great. I must have been on both. Cool. But if you wanted the safety ring to be a different color, you could do that too. Anyway, I like that. I'm gonna add a, I might add a little bit of plastic to it. I don't know, it probably looks fine as it is, so let's just leave it. But you could add this plastic um, material to those as well. Let's just do a quick render and see how we look so far. Yeah, that's coming along really well. I like the shininess of the label. Uh, this looks kind of flatter, maybe more plasticky looking. Like That's kind of cool. And then this bottle looks really good. I mean, you can see all the insides and parts of it um, that sort of interlap, interlap here and like have refractions and stuff. That's cool. I love it. For, for a custom 3D thing using Illustrator and Photoshop, that's not too bad. And if you wanted to, you could probably come in and add, let's see. If you wanted to add some water to it, for instance, um, because if we put a picture, let me let me just do that picture real quick. Um, over here on template images, you can add like a table. And so, boom, there's your table. Now it's not aligned very well with the grid, but let's just go with it for sake of this tutorial. As it renders, you'll be able to see probably too much of what's behind 
uh, of the image here. Uh, but if there was real water in it, it would be even more distorted. So you could just simply add maybe a cylinder that's massive. Let's turn this off. And let's go to scale, I don't know what, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 maybe. I don't know why it won't let me do that, but it won't. Okay, 0.2. What's going on? Wow. Well, the program's a little bit buggy, guys. Um, it won't let me change that. There we go. Now it did. Huh, that's so weird. Well, there you go. Um, let's do position zero that out so that everything's aligned because all of our other things were in the zero position. You can also, instead of changing uh, position scale size, you can also do things here. So I'm gonna shrink it down to about there. I'm gonna bring this up to about here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a little bit higher on the Y, maybe Maybe to there, I don't know. We're gonna, let's do a bevel, click that. 0.79, oh, that's about perfect actually. That's kind of what I want. And bevel it here. I may not do the one up here, so that's gonna look fake. I think I would just bring the size in a little bit more. So probably there, just so you can't see it. And then I'm gonna give that a texture of water, which is right here. So, um, oh, I don't want to cover my bottle. Let's just go into cylinder and bring the water over here. Okay, so now I want to go to render and just see what this looks like. I'm going to do low, fast, and let's just do a PNG so it takes up less time. I'm going to do a fast render. Hopefully this only takes 30 seconds to a minute, something like that. But as it starts putting it together, you can see already the shine is looking really good. The flatness of the cap looks very good, plasticky. You got a nice shiny looking label, um, catches all of the reflection here. And then you get a little bit of natural shadow from the lighting that was just default. And hopefully you get a little bit of more in, uh, refractions here with the water that I put in, even though it wasn't perfect. For a fast, quick, easy, simple 3D tutorial using non-3D oriented software. I think this does remarkably well. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think of this tutorial. If that was helpful to you, uh, leave some comments down below, like, subscribe, all that, and share. All of that stuff helps my channel grow. And I, I'm amazed I'm almost to 4,000 subscribers right now. So uh, we've, we've grown a lot since 3000 and I really haven't made very many videos. So I've kind of shortchanged you guys. Anyway, let me know what you think. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.